I've had an opportunity to visit the laboratories and see these testing dynamometers in action. This combination of testing in the laboratory and on the road is practical research at its best, trying out different kinds of brakes under all conditions, all with a view of ensuring the safest, most comfortable rail service for the traveler and the most dependable and economical service for the shipper. The AAR Draft Gear Laboratory. Here's a specially designed machine for drop testing draft gear. Those vital parts behind car couplers which cushion and protect the car and its contents against stress and strain. That's a 27,000 pound weight you're looking at. Simulating conditions far more severe than would normally be found in actual service, it's dropped from different heights on the draft gear under test. The one thing we freight men know above everything else is that a damaged shipment means financial loss to everyone concerned. And conversely, better packaging, loading, and handling spell more dollars in the pockets of shippers, carriers, and receivers alike. Concentrated inquiry into the science of packaging, breakage, loading. That's part of the everyday program at the Central Research Lab in Chicago. What happens to lading inside freight cars during switching operations while in transit? These are some of the questions that have led to extensive railroad research in damage prevention. And out of this research have emerged new methods of practice and usage be adopted on an industry-wide basis. Coupling tests tell us what we try to find out about impact effects on lading and how better to build cars to cushion the shocks of movement. And railroads do something about the weather, too. Some of the earliest uses of artificial refrigeration were in the movement of perishable products to market. And today, the aim of our research is to keep on improving the methods which help to deliver fresh fruits, vegetables, meat, dairy products, all kinds of perishables to all parts of the country and get them there fresh as the day they were picked. This means constant experimenting and testing by our refrigeration engineers and technicians in the search for lighter, more efficient insulation. And again, our work leaves the lab and is carried forward in transit. Here's a string of refrigerator cars being prepared for a cross-country test. Wiring and special recording mechanisms installed. On the trip, Temperature and other conditions carefully recorded for later analysis with the view to improvement of car design, insulation, forced air ventilation and circulation, heat and water vapor transmission through the insulation. All to the end that the railroads can go on doing an even better job of supplying every part of the nation with fresh, healthful foods the year round. and innovation in the handling of perishables in transit. Complete mechanization of icing and re-icing. Self-propelled units servicing two lines of cars at one time under one-man control, thus cutting down train delays at re-icing stations. Getting the most out of trains and tracks calls for many things, like, for instance, communications and signals. Railroad signals have come a long way from the time when a colored ball hoisted to the top of a pole signaled that the track ahead was clear. Today, trains run two million miles every day on America's railroad under the world's most complete, most effective, and safest system of traffic control. Basic in this traffic control is the automatic block signal system by means of which a train in a block or section of track reports its presence to all approaching trains. 
This is done automatically through electronic operation of signals, which tell the engineers of other trains whether to stop, to proceed with caution, or to go ahead at authorized speed. On sections of line equipped with centralized traffic control, all trains automatically report their exact position and movements through lights on a map on a central control board. Simply by moving little levers on this board, the operator you see here can set signals and throw switches that govern the movement of trains as far as 200 miles away. Through his control board, he lines up signals and switches which are so interlocked as to make it impossible to set up conflicting routes. Special devices are also being used to control the movement of cars in busy yards and terminals, the places where trains are made up or reclassified, the hearts that pump the flow of commerce out across the nation. Here, in a push-button yard, a locomotive shoves the cars of an incoming freight up to the top of the hump. There, the cars are uncoupled, singly or in groups, and the force of gravity takes charge. Gravity controlled by the twin marvels of electronics and pneumatics. As the cars roll downhill, their speed is governed by car retarders, whose slowing down pressure against the wheels is adjusted from a control board in a tower. As the cars roll on, they are routed into their proper tracks by switches which are thrown through push-button controls. Two-way radio communication connects all parts of the yard with the control tower to further speed up the movement of cars through great terminals. These great car interchange centers point up dramatically the importance of another product of railroad research, the standardization of working parts, which makes it possible for any freight car of any railroad to be operated in the trains of any other railroad. That fact is at the foundation of our continent-wide flow of commerce. And it is but one of the results of railroad research in better cars and locomotives better signals and communication, better tracks and terminals, and the better methods of railroading, which combined explain why today's freight trains turn out three times as much transportation service in an hour as the average train of 30 years ago. Well, my story is just about finished. But the railroad story itself goes on, being written day by day, in laboratories and shops and out along the tracks of individual railroads working together through the Association of American Railroads. Still other chapters are being written in university and commercial labs and within the industries that supply the railroads. As a reporter, I came away with this guiding idea that in the railroad industry, the innovation of yesterday is the commonplace of today and that the best of today is not good enough for tomorrow. This is the creed of the railroad research program, the heart of railroad service to the American traveler and shipper.